Good morning and welcome to video number two. I'm, uh, and I'm going to do this a different way. This is for all plasterers that um, re-plaster after damp proofing and that are using waterproof systems um, and slurries and things like that that's, that's not needed. I'm going to explain to you how damp or how moisture travels up through a wall um, through masonry. And I'm going to try and explain to you in a in a in a ship method video that uh, that you might remember, and it, and I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. So, what we have is, I don't know if you can see, it, but down here it says groundwater. So this is your wall. This is your brickwork. Um, bricks. There you go. All staggered. Joints. Now these, these bricks go down under the floor into ground um, and sometimes they get, they were, they were on footings but a lot of the time they, they weren't in olden days, they just used to build them off of earth. Now the earth has water and moisture in it, ground water and it also has salts inside the ground which are nitrates and chlorides now these salts can become soluble they can dissolve in the water so they, while the while they're down here in the ground they're, they're dissolving together and um, that water rises up through um, the masonry via what we call capillaries which are sort of really really small tubes um, and pathways that run up through this masonry. Uh, it's, it's quite rare that it will run through a brick because it always finds its easiest route. The easiest route is in the masonry which, got, um, which is more porous. So a lot of time water will find the easiest route um, and go through the, these pathways. So this water containing salt, which we'll use this to show, show it going through the ground, it goes up the capillaries, I'm just get it going there, so see, so up the capillaries like this over time. And then when it gets to a certain point, it evaporates out of the wall. So, and it evaporates out of the wall. And when it evaporates out of the wall, because you've got air running across it and things, it leaves a salty deposit behind, which is this piece of toilet paper. <laughs> Is represented by that toilet paper, the salt band. Um, so it leaves these salty deposits on the wall. Now there's, a, there's a, an experiment what we used to do at school, what I did at school, uh, it sticks in my mind where you fill the container full of water and you poured salt in it and it dissolved. And it was to show you that. Um, the items can be dissolved in water and then you put it on a Bunsen burner and it boiled and uh, all the water evaporated off and the salt left behind. Well, this is the same principle. So moisture, uh, salts are, are, are soluble in water from ground and that travels up through capillaries and where it evaporates out of wall, salts are left behind. These, are, these salts are hygroscopic so they absorb moisture from air. So when air is humid inside a the property, um, these salts absorb that mo moisture and it makes that, wall, that, the, that salt band become wetter and uh, it'll continually spoil decoration. So every time you paint it, paint will peel, um, plaster will perish, it goes dusty and uh, 
and, and, and basically you, you'll, you'll see it in a property, you'll see it on outside um, in winters and stuff when, just after winter when, when walls are drying out, you'll see these salt bands on brickwork um, and that basically is a salt band. So that's how water comes out of the wall. So a lot of plasters think that they put the backing coats on the wall to stop water actually seeping out. Now it doesn't do that. It evaporates out um, as a gas, water vapor, and it comes out that way. Now the only re the only way that it'll it'll seep out of the wall is if it's below ground level or if there's a step. Now they need um, a waterproof system on them before you put your plastic system in place. Uh, and chimney breasts, that's their sulfate salts. So when you when you put in, uh, I think it's K11 or stuff like that on, uh, when you put in all these slurries on walls, it's it's causing a couple of problems. Oh. So I got pins and needles there on when I did other videos, so uh, I've, I've seen me getting them again. So when you put this uh, tanking slurry on a wall, the the water vapor that's inside property, it slows its journey through fabric of building, so it acts as like a vapor check. So at certain times of year or certain times condensation can form where you've put this uh, vapour check where the slurry is so your moisture is slow going out slow coming in as well you've got a vapour check um, so it can cause its own problems and that's why other systems were invented um, which will allow this water vapour to travel up the wall evaporate out and the salts that come out will be neutralised by the backing plaster that's on. So your systems that you've got is like render light, um, render with an additive in, that does work. Um, dry zone plaster, there's, there's quite a few up market, but also there's the plasterboard system what safeguards brought out call it their express system and you hack your plaster off, you drill and inject your damp proof course and once that damp proof course has been drilled and injected from that point on there's no more uh, water from ground that's going to come up through it but the, the water that's left in your brickwork which is or we appear that's in the capillaries continues to rise and evaporate out where your salt band is until all that moisture in your brickwork is gone and the wall returns to what we call equilibrium with its surroundings it's the same as the rest of the walls think about shutting a hose off so as soon as you when you're washing your car when you turn your, your hose off, you've still got water in that pipe. Um, unluckily, we we hose, you know, you don't, it'll not all come back out. But, um, but think about this shutting hose off here, but it will continue to rise and it will evaporate out at wall. And the reason why you put your do, your, your do re which is supposed to be in accordance with BS6576, which states that you have to use a salt neutralising plaster, is to stop these salts that's, that's left behind um, continually spoiling decoration. And because it's a salt neutralising plaster, you'll not get that. And that's why replastering is, um, <laughs> is, put, is put in place um, using these other methods. Now, the plasterboard method is the cheapest and the quickest um, and most profitable method on the market and that's why I've been trying to push it to, to plasterers, um, joiners, whatever, anybody that can do it because 
it holds the plasterboard slightly off a wall. It doesn't have to be held off by that much. It can be that much. So plasterboard squeezes up and acrylic, this acrylic is waterproof. No one's gonna go through it. Water vapor is a gas goes through plasterboard easily. Um, there's a there's air runs up back of it because you've left a, a slight gap that evaporates air as well, uh, evaporates um, moisture as well coming out the wall and, and then that diffuses into atmosphere. So there's not tons and tons of water coming out at wall. That's I think that's what I'm trying to put through to everybody, get through to everybody that the, the water's not falling out at wall once you're doing a damp proof system. It's water vapour that comes gently out at wall and uh, and your problem is your salts. So once you, you, your salts are neutralised, then that's all right. And you've got to make sure your damp proof course is installed correctly if you're putting a damp proof course in. So that's how damp travels up a wall and that's how it comes out of the wall and that's how you fix it. And if it's done correctly, then it's happy days. You don't have to, you know what I mean? You don't have to panic. So a lot of plasterers, you plasterers that are out there, you're panicking and you're thinking you have to seal all the wall. Um, because damp, damp moisture's you know falling out at wall like, like like a sea gonna come out. You know what I mean? And, it, and it, it's just not case. Now when you're talking about basements, then that's a different matter because you, you you're in realms of hydrostatic pressure, which um, which even though it's not actual water that's coming through a wall, it's water that's been pushed through a wall. So that's like a different thing. But as far as damp proof is concerned and issuing guarantees, as long as you know how water travels up through a wall, then you can be confident that you can issue a guarantee. The only other thing is, is diagnosing it. Because <laughs> unfortunately there's quite a few different types of damp and quite a few different types of damp can affect different types of walls. And you might not just have one uh, area rising down all the way around property and then a lot of you plasters you treat it as if it's all rising down when it's not um, some areas can be penetrating down some areas can be lateral dampness coming through which is when it comes vertically some areas can be sulfate salts some areas can be condensation from inside and some areas can be leaks from pipes um, and that's why you need us to to diagnose it but if you've watched this video and got any value from it, once you've realised our dampness travels through wall and there's going to be loads of water coming out, you can alter your systems that you use so you can stop putting slurry all over walls and all over brickwork because it, it, it creates its own problems. Uh, like I said before, you get a, a vapour check. So stop putting slurry over, over everything. Um, it has its places, you know, chimney breasts and things like that um, to stop sulfate salts as a barrier, um, which can be used as a barrier system. But, there's, you know, stick, in, stick, stick a plasterboard in. Have a look at that system, what, what I've been pushing, what I've been saying is best system. And if you can get familiar with that, um, you can never look back and you'll, you'll earn a lot of money. So that's Damp Sam, with his arm having pins and needles in it again, which is not nice. Uh, signing off, if you got some value from this video, even if you like to watch me in pain, with pins and needles going through, or even if you think it's shit, tell me, um, you know, and I'll try and make other ones a bit better. But hopefully, I've, I've, I've tried to explain it in its simplest form, sat on my bog floor, you know. I know you can't see that, see that, but it says groundwater salts and nitrates and chlorates. And that represented groundwater. And that represented brickwork. And that bog roll represented salt band. So, and that was salt, sea salt. So, oh, then evaporating out of war. So, please subscribe. Please share the video if you think it's good. Or, and you think somebody might uh, get some value from it. And I'll see you on the next one. And this is a YouTube video. There's a different video of what's going on Instagram because I've had to dip the camera all the way around. 
Enjoy your Thursday. Happy um, Jueves. No.